Yeah, it's the archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing Dreesus. Mm -hmm. That AKA Big Dro. <laughs> yeah. Big and Dro. who is Dreesus? Jesus, man. That's a culmination of Dro and you know, some some new things that have been happening in my life, you know. Everybody knows me as Joe in the street and back in the day, but you know, it's uh, my boy Helen back. Shout out Helen back. He used to throw around a bunch of different names. He used to call me all kind of names like Drizzle, Dries, and all kinds of stuff. And Jesus came about like Saint Jesus. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm gonna run with it. It'd be like Drow the Red Jesus, man. That's what we, that's what we that's what we came came up with, man. So I just ran with it, and I couldn't look back, man. And being from Saskatoon, mm -hmm. Hobima, Alberta, elaborate how it all became with Reds Official, members Big Stomp, Kool-Aid, where you grew up on, inspirations such as Run DMC and much more. Yeah, um, with Stomp, man, I always, like, I see War Party, big ups to War Party, because War Party was, like, the very first, like, Native cats that were really doing it on a, on a, a national level, I should say, or at least at least at least like a local level, you know what I mean? Across Canada, man, you know they were doing a national thing, and um, I looked up to them, man. I looked up to them, you know, and um, I met Stomp. I actually met Stomp at a nightclub, man, out in Calgary, and I just spit a whole bunch of bars for him one night, and uh, this is when War Party was popping off, and I was like, he was like, yo. I'm gonna I'm check for you, you know? You know, obviously I was a little bit, you know, rough around the edges and stuff, but um, eventually he came back in 2000 when I was in Saskatoon. I had moved back to Saskatoon and I was actually doing my thing with Joey, Joey Styles and him with the Stress Street thing, you know? Shout out Stress Street. But yeah, uh, Stomp came back. He gave me a, a beat full of CDs, which was the very first motherfucking Res Official beat CD. With um, raw stomp beats and J Mac, J Mac, shout out J Mac. He was coming out hard back then. He still is, you know. But he was going coming hard with the samples back then. And I listened to to the whole CD, and I was like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tear this shit up. And I came up with this song called Brains Blue, which ended up being on the end of the Keep On Moving joint back in the day. And um, yeah, I said that was the very first Res Official song right there, it was Brains Blue, and um, it just it it just started rolling then, man. You know, it started rolling. Helen back came, you know, things happened over over that on that side, but he came back to Res Official, and you know, we all kind of just formed like you know a fucking Voltron and made the thing happen, you know. But um, as far as influences. Shit, Run DMC was the very first tape I got, man. Raising Hell was the first shit, and uh, I was young, man. I was like probably like seven years old, you know. But then I started getting like a little bit of interest, and by the time I was nine years old, I was listening to like stuff like N.W.A., Easy E, Fresh Prince, man, all kinds of stuff, man. Melly Mel, like in you know, LL. Shoot, man, Rakim, all those dudes, man, they, they they influenced me, and I just I just took a liking to the music, to I just felt the vibe, and uh, I just ran with it, man. Like you did, I turned my poems into raps, you know. And the start back in two thousand and four, battling, becoming the general, the first artist of Stress Street. Let us know. Yeah, man. Um, that actually that was before that. That was. Uh, that was back in like 2001, man. I don't even battle, man. Everybody knows. I'm not trying to front like I'm a battle rapper and shit. But um, Joey Styles was throwing a battle back in the day. I know you remember that shit. I know you remember that. But um, And I entered. And, you know, I wasn't even like really sharp with the battle in. But, you know, I entered and, you know, I did my thing. And, you know, I ended up winning that shit. And. Me and Joey we went back to the studio that night with a couple other cats, and you know that's when Stress Street was already was just beginning, you know, and just we just we just went in hard, man, you know, and we started putting on mixtapes, and 
there was there was a bunch of us at that time who were, who were a lot of artists under the label at the time who were going hard you know everybody just kind of did their own thing though eventually and you know i, I ended up going forward res official because stomp already had his foot in the door you know and so like i kind of i kind of held down both crews i still do to this day you know you know and i still hold down heatbag too so shout out heatbag john c charlie feta brooklyn too man you know it's all love man those are my boys no matter what you hear out there that's still my family you know and fast life break down your first project challenges coming up in the game oh man fast life like that was just like a test to me, like, can I put out my own album? That was back in 2004, and uh, it was all production by Stomp and J-Mac. I like to speak a lot about my life and my music, man, you know? That album was a lot about my life, but it was also me trying to find my sound, you know? Like, just going through the motions and just putting out a record, you know? Honestly, like, that was just a, a foundation for who I am today as an artist, you know, I have to put that out there, you know. I still have a lot of people asking me for that shit, so I'm gonna re-release it for sure. So you can look out for that too, man. And many years between projects on a hiatus, any street stories for us, anything to say to the pork chops? Ah, the pork choppers. Man, you guys are trying to get us all, man. You guys can keep trying, but you know what? We're here to stay. We out here making good music for our people we're making big moves with our people you can't stop us as a whole man we're just moving forward no matter our past no matter what happened in the past it doesn't matter no more because we're just moving forward we're just steamrolling the whole game right now so you can't you know i see you guys watching us all over the place but you can't fuck with us man we don't we're moving too hard man too many of us, man. Too many units. And we know your secrets, man. We know you're dirty. And you know you're dirty, too. We see you, man. And um, Res Official, the album, and nominated for a Juno off Lonely. Well, shit, we, we got, we were the only native cats to hit number one on Rap City with, with the single Lonely. And that was a very big accomplishment for us. And, you know, we're humble cats, man, but... You know, we were like, okay, man. We, you know, that was that was that was a big record, and you know, we put out the album, and a lot of personal, personal shit that was going on between myself and other other teammates and stuff. Um, it kind of slowed down, like the promo process and the touring. You know, I actually um, just went through a whole bunch of bullshit with with the pork choppers. Kind of, you know, through a little. Little uh, little twig in my spokes, you know. You know, try try to stop the stop the motion, but we kept going, you know. But um, yeah, we we basically a lot of personal shit happened with the second album. You know, we all had big plans and all our best interests, you know, invested, money invested, time invested. It just. Sometimes things look, just don't work out, man. You know, that's how it is in the game, man. And tapes from Dreezy's Blocks, Dreezy's the Mixtape, Big Baby, Big baby Jesus. Jesus. Big how did baby they Jesus. all go? Man, you know what, man? People are sleeping out there, you know? They're starting to wake up, though, now. They're starting to wake up. Hard work, uh, perseverance pays off, man. You just keep going, man. Dedicated. Trust me, I'm going to keep coming at you with more and more music until it sticks, man. Trust me. I'm getting more and more fans by the day, and I love y'all, man. I love all my fans and supporters out there. I give it my all in this music shit. You know what I mean? Like, from from investing money to time <clears throat> to effort to even just my energy, man. You know, like, hip-hop is my life. It's always been my life, and it's always going to continue to be a part of my life. You know, so it's nothing for me to get on a record and speak about it. So, you know, I'm only going to get better. Just like, you know, just like with anything in life, you practice, you keep going, you'll get better, man. And you put in a lot of work, the most money you've ever held? Oh, shit. I don't even know, man. These guys going off, man. Man, I don't know. I, I've definitely... It's, Definitely over over the 100 G mark for sure, man. 
and working with Heatbag, Big Stomp, NATO to name a few, break it down for us, the music collabs and times in the studio as well as working with Trey Nice and Rut Monster. Yeah, um, with the Red Winter album, um, I was really I was really inspired by like the whole movement that was going on with with my people and and the government uh, last winter and that that whole movement that whole feeling that whole like resistance and that whole rise up that kind of that energy like I, I I felt it man I captured it and I felt like that's what drove my album you know what I mean so like on my album I got stumped. You know, he produced like, he, he produced about sixty percent of the album. You know, I can always count on Stomp for making some dope ass music. You know, Superville from T Dot, shout out Superville. Um, he he produced two tracks on the album, brought kind of a new new element to my to my whole sound, and uh, kind of like a really introspective and really hip hop type vibe he, he brought to the table. And Nato, of course, he put together all the mixing and the mastering, you know, and Nato has been putting together some good projects lately, you know, he's been putting together the Evil projects and shout out Evil, shout out Nato, shout out Touch, shout out Edmonton. Nato holds me down, man, trust me. He's the one, he was the unseen force behind Red Winter, man, you know? And CBC says you're one of the 10 artists the masses need to know, share your influences and artists that you like to listen to. For music, Big Crit. Oh, Big Crit, man! I love Big Crit, man. I'm still trying to get a Big Crit feature, man. One day I'm gonna get that. Trust me. Or a Big Crit beat, even. You know, I'm gonna try to get that together. But he speaks from the heart, man. You know, he's from a totally different place on the map, but he speaks from the heart, and I, I feel like he, I just, I just connect with what he's saying, just on a different, you know, different different plane you know just on a whole different map but i connect with it because that's how i feel like whenever i make music i, I like to be real i like to speak from the heart and i like to speak from experience and i don't like to bullshit the listeners man you know so like definitely big crit is a big influence but um other than that i like power movers man like jay-z i don't give a fuck what anybody's got to say about jay-z man that guy hustles hard man I got nothing but respect for him. Even Diddy with his rapping ass and dancing ass, but I got nothing but love for him because he, he goes hard and he, he built an empire, you know? So I look up to more of the mogul type dudes than, than anything because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing too. I want to put other people on, especially my people. I want to put my people on and help them grow, you know what I mean? And videos, Lay Him Down, <laughs> Big Dreams featuring NATO, I'm Losing Control, directed by Stewie Stew. Kubrick. And that hot single, Me and You, with Inez Jasper, mm -hmm. Share on the Grind. Oh, man. I don't know if y'all seen it, but I'm going to put up a copy of our performance we did at the APCMAs at the M MTS Center last week, or a couple weeks ago. I'm going to put that up on YouTube for everybody to see, because we did a hot-ass performance, man. You know, I had the fucking black on black tux. Uh, she had the little black and gold slip. I had the big throne. I had 100% input on the show, like, as far as the lighting. So, like, for me as an artist, that was a very big moment, man, when we did that, with that, that stage performance at the MTS Center. It was huge. It was huge for me, you know. So, like, I just can't wait to, um, to show you guys what's coming next, you know. And Red Winter. Speak on your incredible album, taking the win for 2013 for Album of the Year, the APCMA Awards. This is the time, and you're in the spotlight. Yeah, man. Like I said, the driving force behind that was was all that passion behind all the shit that was going on in the country at the time. You know, I felt I was I was a part of the whole process too. You know, I was there for my people, and I still am there. But I just feel like. I can only, I can only contribute what I know, and that's hip hop, you know, and that's what, that was the driving force behind me putting together those pieces to the puzzle of the album, you know, and um, it just, it just flowed, man. Me and Nato just banged them out, boom, 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 
then we looked at the tracks and we're like, okay, this is what we're gonna put down. This is what you know. This is what we're gonna keep. This is what we're gonna toss out. But it, it all. I, I feel like it all gels, you know, because it was all. It all came from the heart, but it all kept it in, within the same, same album. And opening for the clips. Anyone else? Best tour, largest crowd you've ever rocked. Oh, the clips in Ottawa. Man, that was a goofy show, man. It, it, I mean, the show was dope. We killed it. We killed the show, and then after the show, uh, Malice came up, and he's like, yo, that, was that you guys that were just rocking it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was us, man. And he's like, you know, he gave us our props, and I was like, damn, that's big. You know, so we uh, we got a little twisted that night, you know, and I already told a, told a story last time, so if you want to if you wanna look more into that, just check out homeboy's motherfucking youtube page and you can read up on that but yeah anybody else you open for uh shit we did 50 cent back in the day with with joey joey and i'm not even gonna say the other dude's name because he's xed out but um yeah man i was i was a young buck and that was like ten thousand people in the crowd man and i was like <laughs> You know, I, I couldn't even, like, I, I was doing Brains Blue, my first shit, and I couldn't even breathe out there, man. Stomp was in the bleachers. I know he was probably laughing his ass off, because I was like, yeah, you know, a little high voice, a little squeaky voice coming out. And, but yeah, 50 Cent, that was a really eye-opener for me, like, because I seen all my people, and this is in Saskatoon, I seen all kind of people I knew I went to school with and shit back in the day. They're all like, what the fuck? Yo, that's, that's fucking, what they knew me as, whatever, Biggie or Big or fucking Fubu or whatever the fuck, man. You know, like, they're like, yo, that's Jeremy, you know, and like, it was crazy, you know, and like, it was a, definitely an eye opener, but yeah, I opened up for other, other people too. Uh. And one of your best hip hop memories you've been part of or contributed to? Best hip hop memories? And a new one? A new one. Oh man. Shit, I think going on tour with Winnipeg most last year. That was a big, big highlight for me because I finally got to showcase my skills as a solo artist. And, you know, I had to open up every show on my own and I had to show out. And I, I gained a lot of fans from that tour, you know. I had a lot of fun. You know, I got to see how a lot of business was handled. You know, so. As far as like, you know, as far as a fun factor, as far as experience, as far as like actual stage, you know, actual like getting to interact with the fans, that that was a big, big moment for me. And I can't wait to tour again, you know. Check for me on a solo tour too though, man, trust me. But before I get into the new album, I'm working on a tour right now. So, yo, if you want to book me, hit me up at dregismusic at gmail.com. And we, we just, we, we're trying to get everything popping right now, get this tour going. And also, I'm working on a new album called Indian Summer. I just said it, so there you go. Boom, boom. Bang, bang. And you got anything to say to Canada? Yo, man, I know you've been sleeping on me, Canada. I got number of love for you. Shout out my dude, Gunner. Double S, Manic for putting together the Native Hip Hop Festival, the first ever of its kind. Big, big things, man. Shout out Tommy Da. Shout out J Fame. I can be here for days. John C, all my heat bag family. Joey Styles. Shout out my mom. Shout out my sons, man. Shout out Archivist, man. You're going down, man. This guy's killing it, man. Yo. Trust me, man. Shout out Van City. You see me in the back? Van City is like my fourth home. I got like 1,600 homes, man. But I got people all over the map. Trust me. And you got any shouts? Oh, shit. There we go. Okay, let me see. I want to shout out. I want to shout out all my DS cats back in Calgary, man. All, all the dudes who were in the Big Dreams video. Jeff Eckert. Um, Stewie Kubrick. Shout out fucking Lotto. John Cena from Peg City, all my Peg City homeboys, free young kid, you know what I mean? Shout out Sab, shout out Money, all my Sass cats, 
Shout out Stomp, Res Official, shout out Heli, motherfucker. CEO, shout out CEO, the newest member of Stress Street, baby. Chill. Bang, bang, double S, you know what it is, man. And shouts to the Big Dreezus, and Manic Wonderful, and Sky Stoney Gunning. Hey. On that Gunner style, hey. and Jay Fame, hey. and Tommy Dust, and Blazing Natives. And this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. Stress Street. Bang, 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 bang.